Hey everyone, in this lecture we will discuss the running time of an algorithm. The running time of an algorithm may depend upon several factors. Let's discuss each of the factor one by one. It depends upon whether our program is using single processor or multiple processors for execution. Because if our program is using single processor, then we cannot execute our program parallelly. So it depends upon whether our program is using single processor or multiple processors. It also depends upon what is the read and write speed of our program to the memory or to the disk. It may also depends upon the architecture of the computer, whether the computer is based on 32-bit architecture or 64-bit architecture. It also depends upon the configuration of the machine. It also depends upon the input, how our program behaves with different input. In our analysis, we are just concerned about input, not any other factor. We are just concerned about input in our analysis. So we need to evaluate time as a function of input. Okay, to, to make it simple, let's first create a model machine. Let's say I have created a model machine, which is having single processor, it is based on 32 bit architecture, and the flow of instructions in this machine are sequential. And this machine is taking one unit of time for arithmetic and logical operations, where I define arithmetic operations as addition, multiplication, division, those sort of operations are basically arithmetic operations. And logical operations are basically AND, OR, ZOR. So those sort of operations are basically logical operations. And let's say my model machine is taking one unit of time for assignment as well as return statements. Let's say A is equal to B, this is one of the assignment statements. Okay, now let's evaluate the running time of our algorithm based on our model machine. Let's start with a very simple example. Let's say I define a function which calculates the sum of two numbers. The function will be something like this. Now let's evaluate the execution time for this simple algorithm. As we can see that this function has only one instruction. And in this instruction, we have one arithmetic statement as well as one return statement. And as per our model machine, we know that arithmetic statements take one unit of time and return statements also take one unit of time. So in total, this whole instruction will take two units of time. As we can see that irrespective of my input, this function will always give, will always complete in two units of time. So in this case, my TN will always be equal to two. So we can say that in this case, my function is a constant function. Now let's discuss some other examples. Now let's say, I let's define a function which calculates the sum of a list. Let's say I have a function which takes two arguments, the list as well as the size of the list. I have defined my total, which is equal to zero. I iterate over my list and I am adding all the elements of the list in my total and in the end I'm returning my total. So in as we can see that in this case we have four instructions. Instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3, instruction 4. Let's calculate the running time for each instruction. As we can see that for the first instruction we have just only one assignment statement. If we have only one assignment statement that means it takes only one unit of time. In the second instruction, we need to iterate over the list. So if I want to iterate over the list, I need to increment my i as well as I need to compare my i with the size of my list. So in this case, I have one comparison statement as well as I have one increment operation. So in total, I have two operations in my second instruction. So this is this will take two units of time. So for the third instruction, I have an arithmetic statement as well as I have one assignment statement. So in total, the third instruction will also take two units of time. In the fourth instruction, I just have only return statement. So this will take one unit of time. Now let's see how many times I need to execute my each instruction. As we can see that I can, I need to execute my first instruction only one time. But I need to execute my second instruction as I need to iterate over my list. I need to execute this n plus one time where n is the size of list. 
I need to execute my third instruction n times because I need to add all the elements of list in the total and I need to execute my fourth instruction only one time. So if I want to evaluate overall execution time of this algorithm, it will be it will come something like one plus two into n plus one plus two n plus one. So in total, it will appear something like 4n plus 4. So as we can see that in this case, our running time depends upon input. It comes as a function of input. And we can see that this is basically some sort of linear function. Fine. So let's have a question time. So what will be the time complexity as a function of input for a sum of matrix? As we can see that in the case of matrix, we will have some sort of n square elements. So if I want to calculate the sum of my matrix, then I need to iterate over my over my each element. Fine. So what does it mean? It means my running time. It's kind of a quadratic function in and it will appear something like this. And we can easily prove it based on our model machine. So in this lecture, we have learned how to calculate the running time as a function of input. In the next lecture, we will discuss how to map those function of inputs into some sets. So thank you guys.